morning, everyone. And Happy New Year. The last time I stood up here and preached for you guys, it was July of last year, and I was only a guest then. And I want you to know that you all made me feel warm and welcome. And since I have become part of this family here at Trinity Lutheran Church, thank you for that. Also today, uh, a few announcements. So Pastor Wilkie and family are visiting their family, and so you got me. There is no Sunday school today, and you'll notice there is no Holy Communion today. When a lay minister is doing that, we don't have the service of Holy Communion, only the service of the Word. Um, everything resumes as normal next week, and then uh, we will be having an Epiphany service here on Friday, uh, January the 6th at 6 p.m. So mark your calendars. That's the actual day that we celebrate Epiphany. And after the service, then we will take down the Christmas decorations. So please consider staying to help with that if you can. There will be snacks provided, and I know that because it says so right there. If you purchase poinsettias, you may take them home today after service. And check your mailbox because the new envelopes are there and waiting. I asked for that a couple of weeks ago, and they said, oh, we don't do that till the first of the year. And I said, okay, great. So I'm anxious to get my new envelopes. One last uh, announcement. I can't see you. Bill and Sue Palmer, raise an arm. There, there you are, right here. Okay, you're in front, front, in front of me, no wonder. Celebrating 63 years of marriage today. <laughs> Wonderful. And so for all of you who are visitors today, I hope that you also find that same warm welcome that I did. Any of you who are joining us via the wonder of electronic media, which I know nothing about, but I know it works, welcome, happy new year. May you be blessed also in these services. So let's take, we got lots of time today. So let's take a whole 35 seconds to stand and greet one another in the peace of the Lord. Whenever the music starts to play, please return to your pews and remain standing for our hymn of invocation.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and of true obedience to your word. To the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given us His only Son to die for us, and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives the power to become the children of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord, sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I desire to do your will, O God. My law is within my heart. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above. And for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the whole peace of the for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Oh, 
pray. Lord God, you made your beloved Son our Savior, subject to the law, and caused him to shed his blood on our behalf. Grant us the true circumcision of the Spirit, that our hearts may be made pure from all sins. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel, and I will bless them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then, the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. At the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from Christ Jesus, his Son, our Savior. Amen. For this brand new day of the new year, January the 1st, this morning you came here to Trinity Lutheran Church to worship Emmanuel, God with us. The virgin birth, true man from that first advent, and then the continuing God with us, true God, while we await his second advent. As you looked at the service this morning, undoubtedly you noticed how short the service is. With the lay minister here, there is no Holy Communion service, only the service of the Word. And the verses from the, today's pericopes, preset, they're all short. In fact, the Gospel lesson this morning is only one sentence long. And perhaps, just perhaps, you may have thought to yourself, or the thought crossed your mind, that today will be one of the shortest services that I've been to in a long while. You might even think that with only one sentence, Bob doesn't have that much to say. But that's not the case. In fact, I've had to cut this message way, way, way down from where I started just to get it to 16 minutes. If you wanted to know how long your nap is, there it is. But I had to cut it down because there's just so much stuffed into that little one sentence that we can't possibly cover it all. Not this morning, maybe not even a week, maybe not even a month. I had to contain my thought process that, so that we might explore the economy of God's Word and unpack what appears to be just this simple, small verse. I'll repeat it. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now, last Sunday was Christmas Day, and families all over the world gathered together in joyous celebration of Christ, the newborn King, and wonder and amazement filled the little children's eyes as they got their first glimpse of all those colorfully wrapped gifts with the bright bows and ribbons under the tree. And each one of them searching to find their name written upon one of those packages. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Famous words penned by William Shakespeare in his play Romeo and Juliet in order to convey the naming, that the naming of things is irrelevant. Well, that may be true of some things. My name is Bob. It's a very common name. It's only relevant to me and important to me because I was named after my father. And over the years, family pets, their names may not mean that much either. My dad once named the stray cat that showed up on our doorstep Clyde. And Clyde won the hearts of all, he became the family cat, but it just so happens that Clyde was a female. When we took her to the veterinary office to have her spayed, um, you should have seen the looks on their face. My dad never changed that cat's name. But how many of you parents out there spent months, maybe even years, thinking, looking through all the baby book or baby name books to try and find just that perfect name for your child? In the Old Testament times, names were given that would even give us a glimpse into who this child was to be and what they might become. But for Mary and Joseph, there's no need to agonize or spend any time on that matter because the baby's name was given to them by the angel. Gabriel, sent from God to the Virgin Mary, and she was told to name the child that she would conceive in her womb, 
Jesus. That very name, Jesus, Yeshua in Hebrew, means God saves. In those days, the father would name the child, and so it is here as well in this case. Not Joseph. Joseph was the adoptive father. But God the Father. He gave the name of Jesus through the angel Gabriel at his conception. He did so because of who he is and then what his purpose will be. So I ask again, what's in a name? The Savior. That's what. And look at the context of today's scriptures. And at the end of eight days when he was circumcised, this is a fulfillment of that very promises of Genesis chapter 3. This is the offspring of the woman whom God foretold would defeat Satan. This is the true man, born under the law to become the Lamb of God, the very perfect substitution for each one of us. Made into human likeness of a man with flesh, but yet never diminishing his divinity. And here in these mean circumstances, is the babe of Bethlehem. Is the true God begotten of the Father, very God of very God, named by His Father to be the salvation for His people. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 tells us, There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the man-God through whom we are given faith in order that we are no longer held captive under the law as was told us through this morning's epistle lesson. Jesus Christ came to break the bondage of our sin in our lives. This is the single most important need of every man, woman, and child ever born. To break the bondage of sin in our lives. To set us free. To set us free to be people of God that we might be justified by faith. Salvation cannot be found in our own good works. There are not many paths unto heaven as the world would have you to believe. There is only one way, and that is by and through and in Christ Jesus, whom each of us were baptized into. He, and He alone, is the Savior of the world. We're helpless to save ourselves. We're all held captive under the law, imprisoned until that coming faith that is, our Savior, would be revealed. And this gospel lesson today echoes the Old Testament prophet of Isaiah in chapter 9, verse 6. He says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The child is born. The son is given. True man, true God. Salvation, just as was promised in the Garden of Eden. The Christmas season lasts eternally for all who are being saved. Salvation in Christ Jesus is present, active, and continual. Salvation first came to you when you heard through the Holy Spirit the words of the Gospel. When He broke through into your life. He invaded you. And then at your baptism, Jesus pulled you up from the drowning depths into new life. Scriptures say that you were dead in your trespasses, and God Himself made you a new creation, alive in Christ Jesus and adopted into His family. And this then leads me to the next point that I want to make. Because Jesus saves... 
you and I have hope for today and for tomorrow and for always. I noticed this last Monday, the day after Christmas, that the stores already have Valentine's Day things that are being put onto the shelves. And I imagine that before Easter ever even has a chance, they're going to be selling Fourth of July decorations. But during the months that led up to this, during the months leading up to Christmas, there was so much preparation and so much excitement. In fact, it even overshadowed Thanksgiving. Couldn't even hardly tell it was in there. But as soon as December the 26th gets here, people are ready to just put away all the festivities of Christmas. But not in the hearts of those who have been given the name of Christ. We Christians bear His name throughout the year. And year after year even as we await His final advent. So what's in a name? Hope. What's in a name? You are. In the name of Jesus is hope. Hope for that great eternal day, but also hope for today. Christians, at Christmas, can even have a very difficult time. They struggle with things like loneliness. Some people have lost loved ones during this time of year. And each year are reminded of that day. Some look around and they see large gatherings of close and loving families that enjoy so much their, each other's company during this time of year. But they have no one to share it with. Some are fighting cancer or anxiety and it prohibits them from even gathering with others. I want to tell you that no matter what your trial is, no matter how difficult that trial may seem to us, because of Jesus, we can and will make it through these times. My grandmother would always remind me during a difficult time that she would say, this too will pass. She would hold up the hope that we have in Christ Jesus to encourage us and to remind us that Jesus would have come to be my Savior. He would have left heaven in order to become sin for me and to bear that guilt and punishment of my sin on that Roman cross that I might be saved, even if I were the only one. And He would have done the same for each one of you. But praise God, Praise God that His sacrifice was not for one, but for many. Even today, this day, January the 1st, 2023, Jesus, by the power of His Gospel, calls many into this life of hope. And this hope is not wishful thinking. This is the certainty of salvation. The forgiveness of sins, a new life, free from the captivity under the law free from the imprisonment to our old sinful life. Freedom to live in that new, joyful creation that we are in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 5, hope does not disappoint. This hope that we have, this hope is certain because it relies upon God's power, upon God's promises, Upon God's sacrifice, not our own merits. It is certain because He has borne God's wrath for your sins and for mine. He has satisfied the debt. It's certain because He conquered the grave and He victoriously rose from the dead never to die again. And it's certain because He rules and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit in heaven. And because each of us are baptized into Him, He has given us this assurance that He will be with us always and that He will come again to take us to be with Him. This hope is certain because we are the objects of His love. 
We are the objects of his affection. He set his love upon us to redeem us and to save us. And God has a 100% success rate. He never fails to accomplish that which he plans and purposes. Now this morning we've only looked at two facets. But there are so much that has been absorbed into those two. Salvation and hope. Some, on this day, make New Year's resolutions. And I want to tell you that every single day, God looks forward to spending time with you in His Word and in prayer. So let each of us endeavor to explore all that is included in the name of Jesus. Let His Word transform us into that very creation that He's already made us to be. Knowing that God saves each one of us because He loves us. He saves us that we might encourage and to strengthen one another. Spurring each other on to good works as He prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And together, we will walk hand in hand as the family of God. And when that last day comes here on earth, at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What's in a name? Everything. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need after we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The heavens are the work of your fingers, yet you willed to save us in the most humble and sacrificial of ways. Already eight days after being born of the Virgin Mary, your Son was at work for our salvation by fulfilling your law and shedding his blood. Receive our heartfelt thanks for the righteousness and forgiveness of sins we have obtained through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, blessed God, you sent your Son into our flesh, and as an infant, he first shed the blood that would cleanse us from our sin. Accept our thanks for the loving kindness shown to us sinners. Grant us a steadfast faith that we would not forget all of your benefits or lose sight of your promises. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you declare that in Christ Jesus there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for we are all one in him. Preserve us from all ungodly prejudice, yet instill in us a deep appreciation of our distinctive callings. Grant that we would not resent what you have called us to be and to do, but rejoice to serve as you have ordained. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord, you have shown your power by establishing governments and leaders to serve your people in your name. Grant to our president, governor, congress, legislators, judges, and magistrates the wisdom and courage to act with integrity on behalf of all people, especially those least able to defend themselves. 
Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, bless and keep us by your grace. Be with the sick and ailing, their comforter unfailing. Dispelling grief and sadness, give them joy and gladness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, in your steadfast love, you have put off the day of Jesus' return until the perfect time when the number of your elect is complete. Keep your people watchful, vigilant, and awake with your gift of faith until that day. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with His favor and give you His peace.